Hello everyone. Welcome to another tutorial on how to create underwater biome. In this video, I will be showing you how to set up some of the corals. Now I have covered the vegetation, the seaweed, and a little bit of fish school system. And now I'm finally moving into some of the coral setups. Over here in the back, you can see that I have a flat plane with a lot of different corals, but let's go ahead and dive straight into the waters and let's see if we can find some of these coral formations that I have placed. So here is a quick look at what I'm working on. The first one is going to be a Thai beach rock formations that I've created something like this. Now again this one is populated with nothing, currently has no corals on it, but I'm as different textures, uh, materials of different static mesh and created these formations. So once it gets populated with fish, you can see that they'll be able to swim between the rocks or uh, set up some of these coral formations in a way that's going to be unique and different from all the other ones. Now another one is something like this. It's some more of a one unique particular coral type and is just populated through the landscape in bulks, so you'll see something like this and mix with vegetation that's already currently growing there. Uh, maybe some other rock formations that are, that are on the ground, but it will be placed through the world and then hand fixed if anything that floats, like you can see right here. Right now it's not touching the ground, so I'll have to fix that, but this is for just demonstration purposes. Again, I can always downscale the size of the static mesh. Uh, here's another one, exactly the same one, but it has a different color to it and the color changes based on the location. So if I were to grab this right now and move it, you can see that it changes different colors, which is really nice. That means I can create so many different variations and keep similar static meshes, but it will create different variations of, in colors, uh, giving it that a little bit of extra to look at. And here we go. Here's another look of it. So based on location, the X and the Y value changes its uh, albedo colors. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And it's something look like this. So these corals are handmade in the sense that I've placed every single coral onto the static mesh. And right now, for some reason, the textures are not uploading. Here we go. So you can see that I've placed each coral individually onto the static mesh of other Thai beach rocks. And we have different corals that do grow in here. And currently no fish, but again, same concept applied to this static mesh. You can see that that one changes in color. So if you were to look at some of these coral formations, they're completely different from these by color. Uh, they are, however, in the same spot. And uh, something like that we'll be looking into and see how we can change that so that way they're randomly created or generated in a sense. Uh, here's another bulk section of the corals I've created as well. You can see that stuff like this will be changed. And as you can see, this one has a original landscape material. And I'll show you how you can change that. So here's my corals that I've created. If we were to go to the location of where it's at, uh, this is the mesh of different groups. So they come in bulks. Uh, the corals starting with O1 and so on, this is the ones I've created. This is some of the original ones we have to look at and change. But you can see that this coral right here has an element and it's done a little bit wrong because we have all the main materials in here. I just now noticed that actually. So we've got to make sure it only has one material. So what you want to do is say mer merge actors and it will eliminate all the elements that's just unnecessary. And then we're going to merge the actors. And let's go ahead and move this. So it's ocean corals, ocean corals, meshes, and under grouped. I'm going to select this one, the fifth one, because that's where it was originally. And we're going to replace it. Uh, the reason that you want to merge the actors is that that way you only have one material element. 
you can see that now it reduced to one. Uh, I think I forgot to do that. Uh, so what you don't want to do is say convert to a static mesh. So if you have multiple of those, if I were to duplicate it like this and combine these two together, uh, do not convert actors to static mesh because it will create multiple versions of materials. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you merge the actors. That way it will eliminate the duplication of the materials. Now, speaking of the materials, so this is the original one. You can see that it doesn't change anything on X and Y value. We're going to go ahead and find it in our folder. So this one is called corals one main. So we're going to find corals one randomizer main. That's the one that I've created. And I'm going to go ahead and change that and set that one up. And now you can see that this one already changing the color based on its location. So if I were to make this a little bit of bigger screen and start moving this, you can see that now it has a little bit of a green here, yellow over there, uh, maybe like dark. I don't even know what kind of color it is. It has a little bit of blue, black in it, and then you name it. So let's say I were to multiply it again. Here is a little bit of uh, orange red and so forth. So you can continue creating different versions of this. So here is a completely red one. And again, it's starting to look really, really cool if you start combining these. If I were to combine all this entire thing to one static mesh, it would only contain one color. So to avoid that, I've uh, created prefabs. And let's go ahead and jump in on how I've done that uh, in the actual setup over here. So let's uh, come up to the shorelines and over here my flat plane that I set up. Now I do recommend if you're creating things like that like static meshes out of static meshes maybe create a empty level and just do it there instead it's just much easier and less confusing but here are a couple of my tests that I've been setting up so you can see that I'm creating from one static mesh and then by combining them together I'll create a larger versions of those. Uh, another interesting concept I've created here was the other corals combinations out of these five or whatever amount they have. And then you can create these bulks. So if I were to press F11 again to find it within the system. So here is a group. You can see that there it's a group of corals in here that are combined. So here's a group one. Let's see if I can move it. And what essentially is in here is if we were to go to group actor and we change it from group actor to groups and unlock, you can see that there's different static meshes with a prefab actor. And if I press G, you can see all the boxes. So if I were to click on these, you can see that when I click on it, this is what it's selecting. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six uh, different prefabs. And within this prefab, I can change each individual prefabrication. So for each of those prefab, we, if you say randomize, it now creates a different version of a um, rock formation. So let's go ahead and press G so you can see a little bit better visually. And then press F11 to maximize on the screen. Slow down the camera so it can move a little better. So here, so if I were to select this piece, let's go ahead and make sure we're selecting the actual group and not the coral. So let's go ahead to the top again, actually to the bottom. So here is our group. So if we're to move the group, it's together. I'm going to say control W and check this out. When I duplicated it, it created a completely different version of a rock formation. And that is because it's a prefabricator. So every time I duplicate it, it randomly regenerates the position of these prefabs. And like I said, when I press G, you can see that they are in there within themselves, these boxes. So if I were to take the actor, which is that one right here, and then you say on group, 
now you can move each individual prefab and then over here you can add your own static meshes that belong to this particular type of a prefab setup. So when you click randomize, it will randomize a particular rock that's in there. Now the idea here is to create as many different rock formations as possible and then on top of that uh, start building up a more prefabrication of the corals and that's exactly what I've done. So I've converted all the static mesh of the corals. These right here, the first one, I haven't even touched the second group yet, but I have not this one. So starting from here to here, we have 29 different corals and I've been creating prefabs just like this one. So this is a prefabrication. We can go ahead and look at it real quick. I don't understand why this material that I've placed on this flat plane does that, but and you can see that this prefabrication, I don't think it has anything in it yet. It's just a, a solid prefab of one particular mesh, but later we'll be changing that. So if you will go to grouped, I haven't done anything with the group to change them to prefabs, but I do have these prefabricators. So if I were to click on the one and find the location of it, I have a few for the corals themselves, and you can see I have more different type of corals and other folders that I haven't even touched yet. But I've heard to select one of these. Here is my folder for the prefabs that I've created and also a prefab collection. So you want to create a collection first and then add your corals or whatever other prefabs that you have within for the your error elements. That way when you drop it, it will choose which coral to spawn and this is what it looks like. So when you populate your corals, it is best if you're to, let's say, select this, you control W, right, you duplicate it, but it creates a different coral within that system because this is what has been saved. And then now you can see that I've selected it. If I click randomize, it will change it to another coral that I've already said that it can exist. Now be careful with prefabs because some of those do not work very well with some of the static meshes. So you can see that more cylindrical uh, corals or more of a tube shape corals are under one prefab and the ones that are completely flat like pancakes are more of a broader and bigger in size that there are in different prefab collection just because you don't want to run into an issue where it will create some sort of uh, collision within the static meshes. So I figured uh, keep them a little bit separate but again you can duplicate this much easier and you don't have to go into the content folder itself to try and so I can even maximize the screen right now and not worry about world outliner or anything else to populate these uh, coral formations. Uh, again, it would be faster and much easier if I were to create even more static meshes that are in larger in size and quantity. So let's say if I were to place all of these everywhere through the world, say maybe another one here, and then just continue putting them in, in spots and places that I think would work well. Now, of course, if you want that particular coral back to be as, a, as similar to that one, then all you have to do is either continue to randomize it or you'll have to go back in and select that particular coral prefab, which I don't like one thing about it, doesn't give you image preview of it. So when you open it up, you don't even know what it is. Um, but what I did was I ended up naming them based on their number location within the static mesh. So if I were to go through to my meshes over here, I'm gonna have to uh, go back and rename these accordingly as well. But I did them in the order, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on, but they have not been changed on that in that folder yet. But you can see that now I can populate this. And then once I'm done with this, let's say if we want to create this as a static mesh to populate it later, like I showed you with the other ones, what you want to do is you want to select all of these corals. Let's say we're just going to take these few, right? We're not going to do the whole thing because there's just so much of them to select. Uh, originally, what you want to do, you want to make sure all of this 
under your world outline is all in one folder so you don't lose it because then you can just select all of but unfortunately with this particular coral i have not done that so let's go ahead and select all of these static mesh first all right so if we're to grab a few of these corals let's let's do just a, a, t a quick test first of all these right here is actually not even static mesh or anything you can see that when they selected they're green which means if you're to go to foliage uh, they have been hand painted uh, under the painting tool over here that I have. I don't know if they're actually enabled or disabled, um, but the the point was just to test that out to see how easy it is to paint them. But you can see that you don't have a control of how far they spawn with vegetation painting tool. So for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and delete these. And that's this was just a test to see if that was faster and better way of doing it but obviously it wasn't because it wouldn't create what i was looking for but let's say we have oh, one of these corals right and then this rock right here so in order for this to properly work when you select your prefab you can see that under your world outliner it selects the actual prefab actor what do you want to do you want to actually select this right here the static mesh under it and uh, you can even disable that coral prefab on its own so when you let's say you move it you you only should be moving right now your static mesh of the stone and the coral right so how do we add another one so let's say this one right here is on it right so we have now three of these corals and if i were to select all these three when i say convert uh, or merge actors it's not going to do anything uh, the, what you, the way you would want to. So what you want to do is select that, then select your prefab, which would be your static mesh. Then you select your next coral. And again, if all of this is within the folder, now I know these are not, so it's kind of a little bit messy over here. I have to clear it up. But the idea is to select all your static meshes, and only then you can say merge to actors. And let's do a test. So we're not going to change anything else within here. Merge actors, and then we're just going to use ocean. And we're going to just save it on there and then we're going to name it test and then click save and the whole idea is here to drop as many of prefabs on each of these coral as possible because then once it's saved check this out now i should have a coral static mesh with the corals that i've originally created they are no longer prefabs you can't move them or change them they're part of this uh, whole big block which is great okay so what i did was as I said you should do, which is create a folder, so I named it example, and you can see that everything within this folder is part of this coral. So when I select everything and I press W to move it, you can see that I'm moving this entire coral. And again, in order to create now a prefab, after, or create a static mesh out of it, you want to right click, merge actors, make sure that within the world outliner your static meshes are selected, uh, the prefab is really unnecessary on that end but let's say the ocean test we're gonna replace this with the with the newer test version and once it's done with that i'll show you how you can now when you duplicate this you can move it elsewhere in the world and it's going to create a different type of coral so i know these stuff are out right now again this is just for demonstration purposes so if i were to drop this static mesh you can see that it's in the world here now. The only thing that's left to do to fix this is go to your pivot tool if you do have one and center it to the bottom. And then we're going to do snap to vertice and then we're going to bake it. So that way it's in the center of your static mesh when you place it into the world. Uh, I think that's the only, that's the longest time that it does take is to have a pivot point properly bake into the world. This was actually pretty quick. Uh, but going back to this folder, let's go ahead and find our example. So all of these corals, you want to do is select them. And now, we're gonna, all we're going to do is just duplicate it. And then without clicking anything else, we're going to move it to the side. And you can clearly see that now this coral formation is exactly the same as this one. The only difference now, it's the position of these corals on the landscape and that's what i was talking about making sure that every coral has its own pivot point set to the bottom of the landscape otherwise you'll be uh, stuck working with this so 
The only thing, like I said, you might have to adjust is the height of it. If you, there's some couple tweaks here and there, like this one right here, that's on the ground or into the coral itself, which I'm trying to see why it's spawning under there. It's showing, but there's nothing there. Okay, so the reason that there is nothing there, but there is a pi pivot point here, and uh, not the pivot, the prefab, is because under this prefab, I currently have Coral 05, which makes no sense, but we'll have to fix it. Oh, that's why, because it's not a um, prefab collection. So we're going to delete this one because it's kind of throwing you guys off from understanding what's going on. So when you do a regular, uh, what do you call it? Let's go to our collection. So when you do a regular prefab, which is this right here in blue, uh, it only has one variation. So it either spawns it or it doesn't. And if you continuously click randomize, it's not going to change anything at all. Uh, it only might give you a possibility a chance that's not going to spawn anything. Uh, but that being said, uh, it usually only works if you have a prefab collection. And eventually, if it's properly built in, in, a, in a way, we can even replace this as a prefab for something else. But again, these prefab collections will have to be really, really close to the other static meshes and size to make sure that they fit. And this is how you can create an infinite amount of different coral formations. And then from there, add it to the spline, which is right here. Here's a quick, good demonstration. So we have a spline here that I've created, right? And if you were to select it, and put all the items in it. You can see that all these are part of the test. So if I were to move this out of the way, like right over here, you can see that it spawns the rock formations in very random locations, but according to the spline, so if I were to select my spline point and then let's say rotate it, I can rotate the whole thing. Uh, now again, I can change some of these lines, you can see that I can move it around however I want to. I can even bring it up and down. And if some of these corals are not um, protruding properly in the world, so I'm going to control Z. But you can see that it does repeat over time uh, from a, a larger distance. But my idea is to add as many different variations as possible, maybe like a hundred different coral formations with the different rock formations and then populate that instead. So if we're to look at the spline, I'll show you how this is set up. So we have uh, different elements in here, and it's a blueprint. So when you open the blueprint up for the spline over here, edit blueprint, open blueprint editor, and over here you'll see that it has the blueprint on how it works, but I just want to show you the static meshes on how they populate. So we have six maps elements, and six of those are all static mesh. And you can see that the first one says LOD zero, but that's just the name of the coral rock formation that I have not changed the name yet. That's one. And two, I have not actually added any LODs to all of these corals or static meshes that I have added. So when you do merge your actors into one from all your other corals and stone formations into one, make sure you create LODs for them because it's currently not uh, supported in the way where it's automatically populated. You'll have to set it up within the editor of your static mesh. And this is a blueprint for the spline and you guys can look at this if you want to, or skip right through it. But there's quite a lot to it to understand it or to try to rewrite this by yourself. But the idea here is pretty much to build a different variation of these splines through the world, underwater of course, for these coral formations that will spawn and be used as a habitat for some of these fish. So we have six, and then let's say if I add another one, seventh, and uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to place a new one.
Now when you do add the seventh like this and it stays empty, what it does, it actually eliminates some of them and it creates empty gaps and spaces. So if it feels like too overcrowded or too overpopulated, you can do that as well. So duplicate the spline point. And now we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> move it over here. And you can see that <clears throat> it creates a different location and formation for it. So again, if you don't want to continue with this, you can just duplicate a whole spline on its own. So when you select the spline, I have no idea what that was. Okay, here we go. So you can duplicate it. And now you have a second one. And of course, with this one, you can change uh, the quantity of certain corals that you have, the size of it, and the location, of course, and the position in the world. So you can, you can create quite a lot of different stuff with it and it shouldn't cost you too much on performance. Uh, that do keep those, I guess, a little bit too short or shorter in distance because of your cold distance and all that. You want to maintain that. But it can be done this way, or it can be done through procedural box setup. But I think spline is a little bit more interesting to work with because there's a lot of cool things you can create. This is just a test. I, you can place them a little bit closer to each other or a little bit farther apart. You can see that the shifting on different values, you can change that on X and Ys. Uh, the random sh randomness of the shift and random rotation. You can uh, see that anything that has a yellow arrow, I've changed these numbers. Random rotation I set to 360 degrees so that it randomly rotates in all directions, which is really nice, very helpful because now it creates different variations and uh, positions that it's facing. And uh, now this is a linear spline. And you can see that the random sh shift is an X and Y value, so you can bring them closer or farther apart. And a couple other things that have been changed. So the thing is a couple other stuff that are changing here. And yeah, I think that's about it on changing stuff. But I set it to complex collisions. So that way there is collisions when character swims through it. And one thing I still want to find is that particular coral that I work with, which was uh, creation from the beginning with little corals and I'm trying to find where I'll put it. I think I've deleted it. Alright, it's right here. I need to find where this is in the folder. So, okay, so that one right there, Beach, Thai Beach Coral 01. We know where that located at now and if we're to take the spline again, select it. And then we're going to add this to here and you can do that pretty much with anything. So. Let's do this with the coral. Now, boom, you can see that it's appearing in two locations, or maybe three, and its rotation is independent. And then we can do eight, let's say. We're going to add this one now, the large coral size. Bam, now you can see that it's populating it. So you can do a lot of stuff with this. I'm actually working on the other project. It's uh, involving like skyscrapers, using the same techniques and method for the Kitbash 3D models of the futuristic world but yeah you can see that it works really good and again you can expand this however you want to you can move it around um i don't know what it, okay so it's stretching everything so you don't want to do that but you could uh, add more s points so again duplicate spline point and then you can move it however you want to and you can see that now it's creating many more coral positions. You just want to make sure that they're not too close to each other and not too repetitive, but creates a very nice and unique look. And once it's all done and set, you want to make sure that your entire spline is selected to let you um, move it in the Z value if you want to move the whole thing to make sure that it's leveled out. And if something is higher or lower you can adjust each individual uh, offset and you can see that it affects quite a lot but again i think that's where you would have to dedicate a little bit of extra time on fixing your landscape uh, rather than anything else because i think that will save you much more time by doing this way than trying to adjust each individual piece because you can't really do that with the spline so that's one downside about splines you can't go into each individual spline 
of this mesh that it's populating and change it the height of it but you can for the spline itself i think the same applies here and i think that's about it uh, everything else here is just a testing site and again repopulating some of these coral formations you can see that just playing around with them and creating more variations of different rock formations first and then then i'll start populating all of these with corals similar to this and all of these are from megascan quicksell mixer so you can find these online uh, really cool stuff i'm kind of excited to see what else we can come up with there's endless possibilities with this and can't wait to see how much more interesting it's going to look in the uh, ocean now i do want to show you another coral folder that i do have which is coral 2 and this is a second folder to all the other corals that i have not implemented you might have seen one of these but that's about it i haven't used too much of the other ones here uh, there's quite a lot of seaweed that's already being used in the world but that the other static meshes and starfish is going to be completely separate they're going to be like a family of starfish that's going to be spawned in certain locations but everything else will remain as one in the sense of uh, the formation spawn of corals so they're going to be dedicated to one and then all the other fish and everything else will be separate so maybe even uh, later down the road some of these coral formations will be converted to a blueprint that will contain a particular type of fish with the blueprint itself but i think it's easier just to control it in a way that you want to rather than telling the system what exactly to spawn because then it's just uh, becomes a little bit less uncontrollable you don't really have too much control over it when it's too procedural like that so with the corals the way it's set up i think it'll look much better when uh, you have a little bit of control of it but i think once i start bringing the spline over here into the world you'll be able to uh, explore much more of underwater with a lot of cool stuff and again i'm gonna have much larger rock formations that are more like rock cliffs than anything else this was just something low ground to cover some of the stuff and hopefully once we get the parallax occlusion it's going to be a little bit more 3d uh, but vegetation is growing and the ocean continues to expand with a lot of new cool features so hopefully this was helpful and I will drop the links to these projects that I'm using so that way you can get your hands on it as well and start building something of your own if you're into exploring underwater or creating an underwater scene. All right, guys, so I hope you found this video a little bit more informative and give you a couple ideas on what you can do with these some coral, uh, coral systems to use a prefabricator, which actually is free you can get so i will drop those links in the description and i will see you guys in the next ocean video update hopefully we'll get some of these corals into the world set up and then we'll slow down some of this fish and populate some of this area to see how it actually looks through this entire landscape until next video guys